Hey, chemistry folks, we need to talk about matter. What's matter? Gas, liquid, solid. Why do we have different phases of matter in the first place? That's what we need to figure out. We're going to talk about matter. But first, let's differentiate between two prefixes, intra and inter. The prefix intra means within, and inter means between. If you go to college, you may choose to play on the intra mural sports team, battling other college students from down the hall or the dorm across the street. You are competing from within, whereas intercollegiate athletics is when MSU takes on U of M, one whole school versus another. We are going between schools. So we need to apply that same concept to chemistry. Here are a bunch of water molecules that have intramolecular forces. That intra force is really just the bond that holds this molecule together. These are strong, and they hold the hydrogens to the oxygens and only break when we have a chemical reaction and make new substances. Now let's look at the same water molecules and look at their intermolecular forces. Each water has one side that is negatively charged and hogging more of the shared electrons. That would be oxygen due to its higher electronegativity. And therefore, the hydrogen side with its lower electronegativity is positively charged. Now, the bond that actually connects the H to the O with the molecule pointed out with the orange arrows is in the left picture is kind of like a marriage. It should be strong and pretty permanent, but due to those charges, what actually happens is that one of the positive H's from one molecule may look across the room and notice the negative charge of an oxygen from another molecule and an attraction will take place. You can see that with the yellow squiggle lines. These water molecules actually have quite a strong attraction to each other, which leads them to hang out closely together and therefore end up in the liquid phase. So looking at things from a larger perspective, some materials have very strong intermolecular forces, which means they stick together, and the more they stick together, they'll be solids or liquids. If those intermolecular forces are very weak, though, then we're often to find those substances as gases. So the reason we have solids, liquids, and gases can be traced back to how much like molecules are attracted to one another. Now we'll go a bit more in depth. There are four major types of intermolecular forces, and let's get started with the weakest. London forces are intermolecular forces that we talk about when dealing with nonpolar covalent bonds. Let's take fluorine gas as an example. What does it mean to be nonpolar, first of all? When the dot structures of these two fluorine molecules go together, they do so so that the outer shell of each can have eight electrons. They achieve this state by sharing their electrons. There is no positive or negative side on this molecule. There is no north pole or south pole in the sharing of those electrons. Each fluorine is equally strong with its electronegativity, so the electron never goes to one side more than the other. These fluorine molecules then don't feel like they need to hang out with each other because there's no attraction between them, and they'll likely stay in the gas phase spread out. Although let's pretend these two fluorine atoms are playing catch with the shared electron. They have a perfectly equal sharing relationship and are bonded together. Each holds on to the electrons 50% of the time. But if I were to pause the video, I would find that for a split second, one fluorine is technically holding the electrons, and for that split second, that fluorine is negative, and the other fluorine is positive. And if another pair of plain catch electrons are next door, maybe the two fluorine molecules might be attracted to each other for a split second. But before they get a chance to realize this, maybe one of them throws the electron back, and this brief, weak attraction is gone. These intermolecular forces are extremely weak and only temporary. So molecules that have only this type of intermolecular force are generally gases. They're not likely to hang out closely together because their attraction to one another is so weak. If you wanted to turn them into a liquid or solid, you better get the temperature really, really cold. Next on the list, we have dipole forces. Let's consider HCl. The chlorine has a higher electronegativity and will therefore hog the electrons it is sharing with hydrogen. So chlorine will always be slightly negative, and hydrogen will always be slightly positive. So when we say dipole, we mean two. There are two poles, one positive and one negative. So if I have a room full of these, there would be lots of interactions causing these to hang out more closely than a nonpolar molecule would. And these permanent weak forces cause like molecules to have an attraction for each other, shown with these yellow squiggle lines. Next on the list, we have hydrogen bonds. And let's be clear. They are not bonds, but a type of dipole force that's very strong. This is what happens with water. 
thankfully allowing it to stick close to each other so that we have water in the liquid phase here on this planet. This generally takes place between molecules that have a hydrogen and also a fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. The oxygen side of the water is very negative and the hydrogen side of the water is very positive. So the positive hydrogen will notice the negative oxygen in a molecule from across the room and a strong attraction will be formed. And last but not least, we run into ionic bonds and their interactions. As I take a molecule like salt, the sodium and the chlorine are not sharing the electrons. They have done a complete transfer because chlorine is so much more electronegative than sodium. And this relationship is great. Sodium was glad to get rid of that outside electron and chlorine was glad to accept it. Now they both have full outside shells and as oppositely charged ions, they will be attracted to one another. But as I start to get them all in the same room, something interesting happens. They start to build upon each other like blocks on top of one another. And as each one has a permanent positive or negative charge, it starts to get kind of difficult to tell where one salt starts and another salt ends. It's like one big block of salt. And they all hang out together really tight, which is why it is a solid. So to recap, here are the four types of intermolecular forces again on a spectrum and the trends that we find as we move from weakest to strongest, left to right.